It's been a while since we last fought a gym leader, yet the Castelia sector is pretty freaking huge. Even long, It took even longer to explore uh, than in the first game because of the sewers and the Relic Passage area and stuff. So, yeah, here Berg is going to put on his Pokemon fan club hat. At least he doesn't want to do it with a Rapidash, which uh, at least reassures me a little as uh, to his sanity. And <laughs> love it. I love how he doesn't even mention his Swadloon, which, by the way, uh, it uh, took the place of his Whirlipede from the first game since, well, Roxy just had a Whirlipede and having two consecutive gym leaders have one. Well, not the best idea. So, we're starting off with a level 22 Swadloon. Now, what I'm going to do in this first turn, it might sound stupid, but I'm going to go for Hone Claws right now. And the reason for that... Uh, you're going to see why very soon... Oh, String Shot? It, does it even have a, a grass move? Because, wow, I, I, I was certain that I was going to take a Razor Leaf to the face or something. Anyway, Rock Slide with plus one accuracy and plus one attack will definitely take out Swadloon. Now, Leavani is up next. It's his ace, of course, and that's the reason why I went with Hone Claws first, and I didn't wait until Dwebble showed up. So, super effective, uh, Razor Leaf does 42 damage, but my uh, Rock Slide will definitely kill it. I wonder if the Hone Claws was necessary. Well, in terms of accuracy, maybe it did, because, well, Hone Claws definitely helps in terms of uh, Rock Slide's rather shaky accuracy. And, um, yeah, I guess that's all there is to say about it. I mean, well, nope, oh, that, that's right, it's got the sturdy... Yeah, let's just th draw this out even longer. I'm just going to use Slash because, you know, Sturdy is going to kick in regardless, even if uh, the Hyper Potion uh, healed it to full. And, in fact, it needs to be healed to full for uh, Sturdy to even work, but regardless, it was going to happen. Dwebble goes down, and I now have my third Gym Badge. Um, as you can see, the levels... Oh, that's right! <laughs> I hit level 31 during the battle, which means Drillbur is going to evolve into Excadrill. It would have been pretty fu uh, funny to uh, show up to this fight with an Excadrill. In fact, I even considered just fighting a few Audinos to let it evolve into Ex Excadrill before the fight began. But uh, I decided against it because, uh, as you just saw, it was really unneeded, as is Horn Drill. I mean, come on, Horn Drill. 30 accuracy. This is just... No, don't use one-hit KO moves. Ever. So, we got our Insect Badge, which will make Pokémon up to, if my math is correct, level 40. Obey Us, which, as I've said before, doesn't matter since uh, I'm not doing trades in this Let's Play, at least not uh, for the time being. I'm probably going to do some uh, in-game trades with Yancey, which we're going to get to that, by the way, but I'm going to explain that later. But we're going we're, we're gonna to use that side quest to get a few Pokémon for uh, the bonus content. Struggle Bug! One of the worst TMs around! 30 power, and it... Uh, it lowers the opponent's special attack by, oh, by one stage, which means it's completely useless against physical attackers and on physical attackers, for that matter. Which is why, just don't, ju just don't use it. Of course, it's not quite as bad as TMs like Bide and Water Gun from the first uh, gen, but uh, still, it's pretty bad and you shouldn't use it ever. Now, since my Drill Burr evolved into Excadrill, I'm just going to rearrange my items a bit. I'm going to give the Miracle Seed to Petilil, since it has the leftovers. And I'm going to give the leftovers to Excadrill. And, uh, oh, by the way, Pig Knight has a held item still, so I'm going to uh, get rid of it really quick, since uh, now that the battle with Berg has been done, it's fairly safe to say that I won't be using that Pig Knight at all for the remainder of this Let's Play. So, let's see what Clyde has to say over here. No, it wasn't! It was just a clean sweep with a bunch of Rock Slides. It's not like, well, of course you have to be fairly overleveled to have Rock Slide to begin with, but uh, still, that's, that's how it went, so... Yeah, hardly amazing. So let's activate the dowsing machine, get on the bike, 
and let's head on north to Route 4, where, now that we've beaten the gym leader, we can actually progress. But not quite yet, because, of course, we have to get interrupted by Calress. This is going to be our first proper introduction to Call Rest, by the way, since uh, he just showed up in the sewers, said a few lines, and then left. He didn't even say his name, which is why I had to introduce him for you. So, Call Rest! Uh, I think he's sort of a Gen 5 counterpart to Charon, since uh, they're both scientists. They were both introduced later on in their respective generation. They were not in uh, the first few games of their respective generations. And, well, there's going to be a reveal later on that makes that comparison hold even more ground. So, Calress is basically obsessed with bringing out the power of Pokémon. That's the only thing he really cares about. And in fact, just like Hugh constantly says, I'll never forgive Team Plasma, Calress is constantly talking about bringing out the power of Pokémon. Always the same words in the same order. And he wants, to, he wants me to fight him, which I will gladly oblige, because, hey, more experience. Now, the, tr the, the fun thing is that he asks to do it on Route 4, where I'll be at even more of an advantage because of Sandra. So, let's head over to Route 4 to fight him, but... Surprise! The Pokémon Breeder wants to fight us again! Now, I apologize for not saying a word about it last time. It's my fault. I intended on talking about it, but I sort of got carried away talking about other, other things. Pokémon Breeders in Black and White 2 will fight you whenever you run or walk or bike in front of them. And, uh, uh, of course, it will only work once you've left the area and uh, come back. However, you can fight them an unlimited amount of time. Which is sort of weird considering that uh, you see them just standing there and you leave and you come back. And they don't, they never had the time to go to the Pokemon Center or anything like that, which makes you think maybe she has an infinite supply of Merrills and Drillbirds, but uh, yeah, it's a pretty interesting mechanic. Uh, it doesn't beat Audino for grinding, though there is one breeder on Route 11, I think, that is pretty good for experience regardless. So, we made our way back to the Crustal Blockade, and Calrus is the key to getting it to go away with some sort of device. Uh, that energizes Pokemon. Don't ask me how that works. He's the scientist, not me. So, that was enough to make all the Crustles go away. Such a shame that we couldn't catch any of them, but then again, Crustles at this point in the game... Well, that's a bit early, let's just say that. Now, this line that Calrus is saying about how uh, Team Plasma views Pokemon, and he says he disagrees, well, if you've played the game, then you already know what's fundamentally wrong with that line. But, um, anyway, Calrus asked us to fight him, and after I'm done introducing myself through the power of muteness once again... Um, by the way, Calrus has a special battle theme that, oddly enough, does not play for this particular battle, probably because they didn't want to give away the fact that Calrus was going to be a really important character later on. But yeah, he only gets the regular trainer battle, battle theme for now. So he's going to open up with Magnemite, which I know for a fact has um, Sturdy, so I'm just going to open up with Slash. And after that, I'm going to finish it off with Dig, or, well, another Slash, since that's going to be enough to finish it off. I was talking about the comparison between the Calrus and the Charon earlier on. Well, I find Calrus to be a bit more interesting as a character than Charon. Charon was just decidedly evil, and he was sort of bland and boring. Though one can argue that uh, the, the, the blandness of Charon might have been by design, uh, considering how Mars and Jupiter just ditch him at the end because he just wasn't ha as charismatic as Cyrus, even though uh, a washing machine is probably more charismatic than Cyrus, but 
regardless. Colorus is a bit more interesting because he's not entirely evil, but he's not entirely good either. That's what I said when I meant that his name describes his character very well. He is just a scientist in pursuit of knowledge, and he doesn't really care about the methods that he uses to uh, reach his goals. So, um, oh, I'm gonna get something. What is it? What is it? What is it? Is it a TM? Nope. It's just a protein boost to attack EVs, not IVs, sorry, by 10. And it only works if you have less than 100 EVs in attack. <laughs> There's no way a person like that could ever exist. That, that line is obviously a direct reference to Anne, who is able to talk to Pokemon. Now, I, I want to head over to Nimbasa as quickly as possible, so I'm just going to avoid all these trainers that are on Route 4 for now. Of course, I'm going to come back to them later. And, okay, avoid this one. Is, are there any more? Nope. Now, the toll booth that was originally here in the first game has been replaced by this. This! is the Join Avenue. This is a shopping mall where you can get all kinds of stuff that uh, can't be bought at Pokemon uh, centers and uh, other assorted stuff that uh, is really, really cool, but we're going to get into that as we, uh, as we get to it. So, um, this guy here is the owner of the Join Avenue, and uh, he wants to go around the world building avenues that bustle with lots, lots of people. Unfortunately, he has to go all around the world, so he can't stay here to manage. So he has the brilliant idea of entrusting the Join Avenue to the first person that runs into the building. Brilliant idea! I don't see how that can go wrong at all. Which, uh, actually, it can't go wrong because I'm really interested in... Um, in this feature, but yeah, favorite free phrase that you use to greet everyone. Um, you know what? I'm going to make these phrases sort of Viet Crystal theme because I don't have any other ideas as to how I could handle it right now without uh, falling into completely immature stuff. So I'm going to go with the word trashy for this one. I'm sure everyone remembers that from Viet Crystal. Very important to not forget the exclamation point since uh, there will be no exclamation point ever since you, uh, if you don't put one there. Some, when something truly moves my heart, shopping, shopping, win, win. So, um, of, of course, anyone understands the concept of winning. So let's just go W I N WIN! Now, as I said, this is probably my favorite new feature in this game, and probably one of them one of my favorites in any Pokemon game ever. I swear, if they get rid of this in X and Y to make some room for Pokemon and me and bullshit like that, I am going to blow a fuse! <laughs> Yeah, kind of like that. So, the owner is going to leave this place now, so we are now free to do as we please in this Join Avenue. But, however, we must first do something about this whole being completely barren problem. So, how should we address you? Well, nothing particular, so I guess I'm going to enter Jeff again, I guess. This is my nickname for the Avenue only, by the way, if you couldn't read. So, um, yeah, these two are going to be my assistants. They are going to, uh, help me, you know, customize the, um, the, the avenue, do various things that we're going to get into soon. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty much ready so I can talk to her again. So, uh, this next part is going to be a bit tutorial heavy, you know, to, um, make sure you understand how to run the joint avenue to, uh, to begin with. So... I'm, I'm, I'm going to need to find Martin Luther King somehow in order to run a shop. So, someone is coming this way. So, uh, is it Martin Luther King? No, that doesn't look like Martin Luther King at all. So, let's just talk to this guy. So, this guy, uh, Janice. I think uh, this first NPC is always named Janice. Uh, for some reason, I guess this is hard-coded that way or something. So, uh, if you choose Invite, you can ask him to open a shop. So, he wants to train people's Pokémon and make them strong, 
which is going to result in the opening of a dojo! That's right, Janice Fitness is now open! So, let's visit Janice Fitness, but we're gonna take care of that next time!